Hi, it's Chris Watkin back again with John Durrant, who is a very well-known uh, ex-state agent um, who subsequently set up his own business with doing photos for estate agents. John, how can estate agents be happier in their job? Talk to me. Yeah. I mean, it's, a, it's a really, really tough question. How can state agents be happier? Because um, I'm looking at it from the perspective of 50 odd years ago, mm. um, and to, the world has changed. Um, there's no doubt about that. Um, but has it changed? It has changed, but it hasn't changed. You're still in the business of selling houses. Yeah, uh, so that, that hasn't changed. It, it's get a homeowner, find a buyer. Yeah, it's um, you. You are working with other people um, in the area. Now, I, I've just used the word people. Um, I always have thought of myself as a professional um, estate agent, somebody who worked for the, for the client, um, even though it didn't necessarily always work in my interest to, um, uh, to do that. If I felt that, um, you know, I remember a, a, a story where somebody actually phoned me. He'd actually gone around and knocked on the door because there was a board up and he phoned me up. He said, I just agreed a, a sale with the elderly Mrs. So-and-so at this price. And, and I want you to, um, to instruct solicitors. And I said, okay, what, what price is that? And it was about, I don't know, it was 10% less than what I thought it should be. And I said, well, I'm really sorry, but I don't think we can accept that offer. He said, well, we have. <laughs> I said, I'm really sorry, but that's not the way it works. Um, and um, so I spoke to her um, and I said, don't accept the offer. And we sold it for, you know, what we, we're going to set it for. Now I could have made life easy for myself uh, by saying, okay, we'll, we'll take that off. I, I wasn't popular with him, but I didn't care because I was acting for, uh, for the vendor of the sale. So that's just one example. I, I, think, um, I think there's a lot of aggression uh, between state agents. Yes, I, um, we almost, I mean, we, we, you know, looking at the posts, you know, people are talking about their market share, which is, again, is I believe egotistical just to say that theirs is bigger yeah. than their competitors or yeah. they've listed so many houses. You know, I find it fascinating that estate agents, that the pain that they have from losing a listing versus the pleasure of gaining one. Yeah. So, I mean, one of the things I would say about... Why, uh, why is that? Why is it? It's, it's because it's ego, um, you know, because I... I if I lost a listing, I would feel upset about it, but for about 10 minutes. Um, and, and then I would think about why did I uh, lose that instruction? Um, and then I would try not to lose any sleep over it. Uh, because the moment you start losing sleep over something is when you're actually going to become ill. Um, and that's not going to help anybody. So you have to, to stand back. Um, and I, I would say, you know, be less aggressive, less bitching. Um, about other other agents and just try and work with people. Do you think it's because we focus at, a lot of estate agents focus on focus on themselves and getting the deal because they focus on doing the transaction and not necessarily the the relationship? Uh, yeah, the relationship. Um, I I think that um, I think if agents actually thought about the job that they were doing um, more uh, rather than treating it as a sausage machine or, or a, a you know um, a conveyor belt yes. uh, type thing and looking at the numbers I think a lot of it's part a lot of it's due to um, you know we all want to do well yes um, and we look at um, at the numbers to see or at least the corporates did um, much more than I ever did as an independent agent they, they look at the uh, the numbers and see how many transactions you're you're getting through I actually just much preferred making the money than counting it. Um, it was, it was to me, that was much more important uh, to, to, to do a fantastic okay. job, um, you know, marketing somebody's property, um, getting interest in it, because if you do something like that really well, um, then people will come to you um, and you don't have to chase the market um, so much. I mean, does it, does it... Does it surprise you that only one in eight buyers go back to the estate agent they bought their house off, even though I, half of sales have been only been in their house six years or yeah, less? I, no, it doesn't really surprise me. I, I, Do you I, think you would have been the same back in the 60s and 70s? Um, I think we probably have more people uh, coming back to us. But I think um, also that, um, that 
agents, and in fact, I don't think we did it enough. I think agents who don't maintain some kind of a contact, you know, you, know, you could send a little, one of these little biscuit presents or something, couldn't you, every year and say, you know, congratulations, you've got another year, this is Bertha, okay. when you moved in, you could do something like that, just so that they remember you. Um, because I think people have got short memories. Um, and if, if they're dealing with you as a buyer, um, that you're not necessarily seeing, seeing okay. you as a vendor might see you as well. I think that possibly is. Um, do you, so come back to the original question: estate agents being happier. Do you think a lot of it's down to the fact is that they see it as a transaction and not as a long-term relationship? Then, or is uh, there something? Yeah, else? I, I think I think they're counting they're counting the numbers. I think they're trying to, um, uh, you know, satisfy the targets that they have um, and. I, as I said, I, I think it's much better to, to actually think in terms of doing a job brilliantly because that's when people come to you uh, rather than, you, you know. So in other words, you're not a slave uh, to your targets. Um, and what about doing the job properly? You know, there's, a, there's a, a school, a lot of people have said that estate agents seem to be packing more and more into their day, cutting corners. You know, we, we still got the same amount of hours today as we did back in the 60s and 70s, yeah. although we do have distractions like social media and things like that. Do, do you think um, estate agents, you know, should be, you know, employing more staff, but then the costs go up, but then fees have come down from 1.6 to 1%, so it's kind of chicken and the egg. You know, uh, why do you think fees have got, do you think, fee, because fees have gone down, it has attracted the right sort of people into the industry because we can't pay them, so they're less happy? Yeah. Um, I think that's true um, of a lot of um, the services um, that estate agents are supplied with as well. You've got, um, uh, I, I, I look at um, Facebook photographers, photographers group who are complaining because they're getting paid 30 or 40 quid to go and photograph um, houses. It's unsustainable. Um, I think it's because people aren't taking um, estate agencies seriously enough. I don't think they're taking the job seriously enough. You get... Um, Kellogg's Cool Flakes come in brightly coloured boxes and they're two quid each. And you've got um, on, on Right Move, literally thousands of houses that have been terribly photographed. Uh, the copy's badly written um, and, uh, you know, it's just the same old, same old. And there's nothing um, really that differentiates you from, uh, from anybody else. And so I think you've got yourself to blame. <laughs> I think you've got yourself to blame. I sound like Attila the Hun, don't I? No, go on. I, I think you've got yourself to blame. Because the ultimate question is, how do estate agents, the people, agents watching this, if, you know, if you're a 20 or 30 year old, how do you be a happier estate agent? How do you get more fulfillment from your, your job? By taking your job seriously and thinking of yourself as a professional person who has a real responsibility uh, for the people that you're working for. You are responsible. You are, the, you are their marketing department. Uh, for God's sake, um, you're the person, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you a story. Um, my second boss was a guy called Hugh Winter, um, and he was something of an eccentric, and um, Manico didn't like him particularly. He used to invite the local solicitor in for a game of chess and a bowl of soup at lunchtime, and so we got all the probate sales in Farnborough. Uh, this is my second office. Manico didn't like him, so they hired a hotel um, in Woking called The Cottage, and they held a debate between him and some other guy called Alan Thompson, who had been sent off to New Zealand to see how houses are sold there because they're 10 years ahead of us, and they still are um, in terms of their property marketing, etc. And there was a debate, and the debate was, should there be gimmicks in a state agency? And this, I think, Alan Thompson stood up and he spoke for 20 minutes about why there shouldn't be gimmicks, uh, because we're professionals. Gimmicks? What do, you, what, what do you mean by gimmicks? Well, I don't know, uh, to be honest. I, I mean, you, you mean you could say today, a lot of people say property video tours are, are a gimmick, especially a gimmick. if the agent is yeah. presenter-led. Yeah, okay. Well, this is, this is what I'm coming on to, because we all broke for a cup of tea, um, and then we went back to our seats, and Hugh, big man, um, hands two, you know, big brogues, sat up on stage just looking out into space. And of course, we were talking to one another and the noise got louder and louder and louder. And then suddenly he stood up and out of a plastic bag, he took a hat with an arrow through it and stuck it on his head. And so we all looked at him in stunned silence. And he said, there you are. He said, I've got your attention with a gimmick and a state agency is all about getting attention for the houses you're selling. Now, for me, that was an epiphany. It basically meant that from that day forward, 
um, I, for me, the most important thing was the house, I, about making the house the star of the show by whatever means I had available to me, because um, back in those days, we didn't have um, you know, the technology that we have today. Um, and I've just sought to leverage that technology uh, today to, to, to do exactly that, to, to get houses noticed. And if you think of yourself as somebody who's a professional property marketer and salesperson, then I think you have uh, something to offer uh, to, uh, to the wider world. Um, and that's really, that is a state agency. It's, it's about getting instruction. Yeah, that's a people, people thing. Uh, people buy people. You've got to do that. But then, I mean, how would you, you know, how would you describe um, what happens after, after um, you win the instruction? What with most estate agents? Yeah. Take the photo, go, rack it off, right, move, go and get the next one. Yeah, exactly. And, and so, <laughs> you know, that's not really the way it should be working, is it? No, it shouldn't be. Uh, it, yeah. But I mean, this technology ruined it because, you know, in the old days, we used to have hot boxes where you used to uh, actually manually pick up the phone to people and say, yeah. and, you know, oh, yes, I've got to buy for that. Yeah, I, and, and that was one of the biggest challenges for me when we, when we had our, um, got our first CRM was that it just didn't work as well as having a hot box. So if you've got a hot box, you can write little notes in the back. Uh, we had a code, um, which was G-U-A-L-O-T, which was, gives us a lot of trouble. Gwallets, <laughs> you know, that, that kind of thing, which you can't really get away with these days on um, you know, uh, putting that on. Uh, I mean, CRMs are great at um, recording stuff, um, you know, that, but that's, that's, that's about it. Hmm. Thank you for your time today, and I hope you've taken something from that, boys and girls of a state agency, to make your life happier. Thank you very much for your time, John. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Thanks, Chris.